everyone at some point in their life must look back and wonder what they did with it. This is George, and at the age of 30, his best days are already well behind him. All George ever does anymore is sit, idle, in a chair, chain-smoking his life away. George, I hate you. What's left of it anyway? Stuck in this condition, George often looks back, wondering where the first 28 years went. There he was one minute, his whole life ahead of him. Just out of school, he married a pretty girl named Evelyn, and together they lived in a great big house. But then, within the blink of an eye, it was all gone. The army reserves had become an unexpected full-time job in the most hostile of conditions. Upon returning home, George wasn't the same. Eventually, he and Evelyn grew apart and separated. Across town, in a neighborhood riddled with crime, George lived by himself, an elusive recluse. Loneliness and depression were his only companions. But, come nightfall, all these restless thoughts of anger and despair seem to fade away. This is Eli closest thing to a friend George had. Working as a jailer at the local police department, Eli would often turn George on to some fertile hunting grounds, providing names and addresses of the town's most offensive and ill-reputed residents. Well, order sandwiches will be out in a couple hours. You can have that, homeboy. Why don't you try some of that? <laughs> On this Saturday night, George would find himself poaching a local swindler by the name of Mr. Ornsby. What appeared to be just another shabby roach motel was in reality a thriving brothel full of eager customers, paying for hookers, drugs, and all the rest of it. Mr. Ornsby served as the sole proprietor and mastermind, reaping most of the benefits for himself. On this night, however, Mr. Ornsby would be nothing more than slaughterhouse swine.
Evelyn and George remained on speaking terms. She even lent a helping hand when George came calling. All he does all day long is sit on his ass and watch that stupid puppet show. It's pissing me off. Well, that's all I do too. I stay home and watch TV. I don't watch puppet shows though. I asked him to take the vacuum cleaner apart last week and all he did was lose all the pieces. Damn. And now Rod's talking about letting me go. Those two car thefts last week are really costing him. Hey, will you get that out of the back? Yeah. He quit. I can't leave till 5.30. Uh, I gotta go. I'll call you later. Hello. What can I do you for? Yeah, this is my vacuum. It's not working. The spinner's not spinning. Something's broken inside of it. Have you had it in here before? No, it's the first problem I've had with it. Okay. Well, it's probably a broken fan. That's a $24 part. With labor, it's going to come out to around $84. Okay. Feel free to look over the service menu. We have other services we provide, but I just need to get your name and phone number right here. Should be ready by 5 o'clock tomorrow, and you can pay for it when you pick it up. Yep. Are y'all still hiring? Yeah, I'm looking for a guy to do rebuilds. Pays $15 a rebuild. If you're quick, you can do about two an hour. But there's not always work, you know, feast or famine. Yeah. Oh, this is George. He's been looking for something to keep him busy. George, Todd Waters. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You got any mechanical ability? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I used to work on diesel engines in the Navy. So. I'll tell you what. Be here tomorrow at 9 o'clock, and we'll get you started. How's that sound? Hey, what's up, Ralph? I'm afraid a gun is much protection against ghosts. Everyone is in the state. Can you fix the CV joints in my car tonight? The only yeah, uh, what else you say it was doing? It's shaking in the front whenever I go over 50. Uh, there's a Stu and Francis marathon on tonight. I'll do it in the morning. No, do it tonight. I have to take George to work tomorrow. Plus, you said you'd do it last Saturday and you never touched it. Why do you still hang out with that piece of shit? Don't call him that. You know why I helped George. Right. Fuck that piece of shit. You're a piece of shit. I'll kick his ass. I'll give him one of these. You're not kicking anybody's ass. You're a lazy ass piece of shit. All you do is sit on the couch and eat my groceries. You don't do shit. You can't even get a job. Loser, that's all you are. Fuck you. All you ever buy are these fucking apples anyways, and I fucking hate apples! And you know what? Your apples can kiss my ass! Colder than usual. Hey, George, I'm back. You wouldn't believe those guys. Yeah, well, I just took a pretty tough job myself fixing vacuum cleaners. Vacuum cleaners? That's gonna draw a horny cry to women. Yeah, I guess so. Beat staying at home and freaking out all day. You're gonna be home tonight? Yeah, I'll be home eventually. Right now, I'm scoping out the car lot at Evelyn's work. What for? Three burglaries in the last week. They're losing money. So, uh, you got anything for me? Yeah. I got a couple of brothers. Came here earlier for beating their wives. Well, hey, uh, looks like I got something here, so, uh, let me go. I'll call you later. I'll come by tomorrow.
want to. I got some time. Where do you think he is? Probably just got a late start this morning. He's supposed to be in charge. I think he'd be here by now. Are you okay? Yeah? Why? Well, you seem a little nervous. I don't need this job. It's just to occupy my time, right? Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, I guess I'll see you later. I'm gonna go try to do this. You want me to pick you up in the morning? Uh, yeah. yeah Maybe today, George would have a shot at a normal life. Perhaps he'd be free at last from his own inner turmoil. Hey, hold this. Nice. Is that your sister? Nah, that's my ex-wife. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I got an ex-wife too. Two of them. Both of them Filipino. Talk about some terrible fucking food. It's pretty simple. With every rebuild, we offer a free polish. You've got all the tools you need here. The grinder, you got your air compressor, cordless drill, the bits here. Be sure to keep the extra battery charged up. Your belts, you got your rug plates. These are called rug plates. You got your fans, got your cords here, got your bags, big bags. People like their bags big. Bill, pay attention. Uh, it's George. Whatever. Okay, if you run out of a part, you write the part number down on this order form. Does that sound like something you can do? Yeah. I Great, can... George. Great. It's going to be fun working with you. And this would be Rod. Rod, what happened? <laughs> Check it out. Cops found one of them dope fiends all bloodied up right next to this 1998 Dodge Dakota. My guess is just one of them thieves. Mm-hmm. Bet he is in here cutting cats. Cutting cats? Catalytic converters? <laughs> yeah, they say there's a lot of platinum in them. See, they get down here with an electric buzzsaw, and then they really get to work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, little girl. I'm just kidding. Where did all the blood come from? Oh, yeah, cop said his mouth's all tore up. He looked like he'd been worked over by a back alley dentist. <laughs> hey, Emily. Take me to jail so I can get full dental coverage. <laughs> I bet he busted his teeth out trying to scale that fence. Oh, yeah? You see what drugs will do to you now? I got half a mind to start piss testing all my employees. I might even have to watch so they don't go sneaking around doing piss swaps. I may have to watch you pee, Evelyn. I may have to watch you pee live. <laughs> Woo. Now go on, little girl. Get in there and find out who's late on the payments. Vacuum cleaners are all fucked up, Todd. It's not gonna be a problem. Let me get George in here. George! George, get in here! Did a 
it'll just be a second. Yeah. I'd appreciate a yes sir if you don't mind, George. The beady eyes that peered out from behind all that bloody gauze were unforgettable. George! I'd appreciate a yes sir! Yes, sir. This is Mr. Orangeby. He's the manager of the Lust Hotel down on Main Street. Tell him what the problem is. <coughs> well, it smells like burning wires every time I turn it on. And they won't suck. So, George, you think you can make them both suck again? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. right away. Do the full rebuild like we said. Luckily, Mr. Ornsby's bourbon pickled memory wasn't too sharp. He went right over his head. I think I've seen him at the motel before. Anyways, what do I owe you? Oh, don't worry about that. I'm sure we can work something out. So, uh, how does tomorrow night look? Oh, yeah. Uh, get there around 8. I got a couple of new girls. Canadians. <laughs> One of them just turned 19. She'll be perfect for you. What, is she fat? What does she look like? No, no, no. I only deal in stuff. And stuff that is real fine. 110 pounds and tight as a vice. You won't find anything better at a competing price, even if you travel the whole world over. <laughs> I know what you like, Todd, and her name is Miss Vixie. She's got it all. The gag, the whips, and the paddle slapping. All right, just be careful when you get there and call me. I don't want anything bad happening to you. Okay, I'll call you tomorrow then. All right, all right. At the working man's house, hunger looks in, but dares not enter. Damn that shit stinks. Think you could get another costume? Or at least wash the damn thing? It was Evelyn's idea. We had a Halloween party one year. Everyone dressed up. Different costumes. Some kind of charades party. She was probably fucking them by then anyways. They all do it if you stick with them long enough. Here's a real treat for you. You think you could take me there? You know what I like doing that? You know what happens if I get caught with you? You know how hard shit would hit the fan? Come on, man. Uh, draw me off like a mile away. Two blocks will be okay. All right.
So you think you can look at my car tonight? I'm hungry. Won't be ready for another hour. starts dripping and then next thing you know she's calling it uh, assault. <laughs> you know? The inhabitants were wild men with features reminiscent of feral dogs with mange. Together they nested within the ruins of a filthy wino's den, howling late into the night and sharing daring tales of crude sex and unlawful escapades. <laughs> I grabbed those things on the desk over there and I looked and there was some anal beads and I'd pick around with a golf ball and start putting them in so, and if I got them all in there and fucking we're going at it and she's like, all right, pull them out now, you know, and that's like, so I just grabbed them up there because I'm going, wow! <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> the puzzle was finally completed. A few pieces short, however. Evelyn, the car's fixed. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. So I don't think I'm about to take the Browns to the Super Bowl. Do it, coach. I'll be cheering you on. Better walk slow. <laughs> second payment was due Saturday. You missed that. I wrote a note down. Today is Tuesday and you said you'd be here Monday. Okay, well we'll see you later on today. 
We close at six. Okay, bye. Hey, sweet cheeks. How you doing? Hello, I'm good. You are good. I'm good too. <laughs> Those stacks get bigger every time I look at them. Damn! These many people not paying? Yeah, but at least there's more people paying than not. Yeah, well that's all fine and good. You gotta keep a good, hard grip on them, girl. Yeah, a good, hard grip. George, are those ready back there? Yeah, they're done. I put them on the workbench. Hey, I was needing to get some belts. Do you work here? Oh uh, yeah, I just started yesterday. My name's George, by the way. Hey George, I'm Emiliana. You'll be seeing a lot of me. A lot of me. Hey there, Miss Emiliana. What can I do for you today? I was just getting some belts and introducing myself to George here. She was saying she needed some belts. I gave her one over. Yeah. I'll take care of this, George. Why don't you take out the trash like I told you to? You gotta keep an eye on him, you know. So, is there anything else I can get for you? No, I've got my belt. And what do we have here for the little spider man? Can you say thank you, Toby? Thank you, Toby. Oh, he's a little joker, isn't he? Toby, why did you do that? You don't kick people after they give you candy. So, uh, what's with George? George? He works for me. He's supposed to fix vacuum cleaners. No. I mean, does he have anything going on? No. Just between you and me, I think he's a little... Tonight. I've been shopping for shoes. Tell me the truth, damn it. I told you I've been shopping for shoes. Bitch, you've been sucking dicks and telling lies. How can you talk to me like that? Don't get coy with me, you little slut. That's it, I'm leaving. Why, I oughta. I oughta. Now just go to hell and die already. <coughs> George, we need to have a little talk about etiquette and what your place is here. I'm supposed to fix vacuum cleaners, right? First rule, do not talk over me. Got that? Yeah. It's real simple. There are two roles here. There's me. I'm the upfront guy. I answer the phones. I talk to customers. I sell suckers to suckers. And then there's you. You. Stay back here in your little pit and fix vacuum cleaners. You don't go up front. You don't ever, ever talk to customers. They are not to ever see you. They are not to know that you exist. George, come here. Let me see your hands. Come here, let's see. Ah, oh, shit. Look at that. Now look at these. You see a difference, George? My hands, they're so smooth, supple, damn near perfect. Now look at this. What is that, George? What do you call that? It's manual labor. You have a lack of manual labor. 
Lack of manual labor. Well, let me tell you what, George. You got a lack of this. No talking to customers. And no talking on the phone unless you're on your break. All right, it's got a gray horn, uh, no radio, and uh, that little scuff right there, I'll take uh, $300 just for you. So do you think it'll give me any trouble? It'd be a first for me. Well, I need it for school. I have to drive about 160 miles a day. You just listen to this little four-banger run. So what do you think about her? I guess so. <laughs> Let me get the papers done, and this baby here is all yours. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Evelyn, get out of contract. I just got a buyer on the green gasser. <laughs> Thank God it's a windy day. Oh, and you make damn sure they sign that as-is clause. Okay. Did you get all these repairs done? Yeah, yeah, they're all done. They're in the back. Did you call them? Uh, no. Dog shit! How are we supposed to get paid if the people don't know the suckers are ready? You told me not to talk to customers. Well, I didn't mean don't call your repair customers. You know what? Just get out of here. Looks like I got some work to do. Thanks a lot, George. Thanks a lot. I'm doing good now. Disregarding the gentleman's agreement, George would be doing more than just talking with this customer. You need a ride? Okay. With her advances thinly veiled, Emiliana made her intentions known. You can clean my carpet any time. <sighs> I'm glad you're a repairman, George, because my suction valve needs a lot of maintenance. Before his head could explode, George got out alive. It was a close call for what resembled a helpless rabbit in the grasp of a hungry vulture. However, this would not be the worst of it. Just, just hold on, just let me think, okay? I'm tired of waiting on you. It's like this all the time, Ralph. Sick of it. It's like this all the time, Ralph. Just take the damn thing to mechanic. You're so lazy. All you do is sit around this house all day and don't do anything we need you to do. I'm so sick of it. Tears of jealousy were soon forgotten as he was now clad in his Sunday best with thoughts of teenage vixens thick in his head. It was to be a real treat for Todd.
call your name and you hear it, you're getting out today. So be ready. Pretty. Zamor. Stewart. That's all for today. Better luck next time. You're not getting out today, Alan. Tomorrow ain't looking good either. Mr. Winsby? Who's asking? Todd Waters, Super Suckers. I'm here. Ah, she's up in room 412. Okay, room 412. I'm on my way. Ah! Ah! Ugh. Son of a bitch! Oh! With arms unfurled, the smell of cheap wine and even cheaper perfume signaled her arrival. I can't keep my mind off you. I don't think I can keep my hands off you. Waters. Uh, I was here for a little company. Maybe some romance. In a most unholy fashion, she proceeded to spread it on thick and heavy. Rise! 
piece of shit. You will do as I say, and on the menu tonight is pure pain. Welcome to the church of fuck. <laughs> Despite his mumbled protest, the sacrificial lamb was set for slaughter, as the powers that be watched from the heavens. And now the ceremony of purification will begin, as I baptize you with a sacred sauce! Menstrual blood of an alien virgin marinated in 40 ounces of goat sperm! Sprinkled upon the crown of thyself. All your lust and gluttony will be flushed from your body. You have no soul. You will be purified of all your humanly urges. <laughs> With dreams of lust left shattered and in shambles, the night ended in a whimper. Drop your head. To a sobering sunrise, the grand dam of nasty night's pleasures staggered about. For George, the morning brought ugly truth and bitter consequences. George, I'll see you tomorrow. George, you gotta go. I know.
In the shadows of a distracting night, the king's tomb was raided once again. Shit! 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 Radios! Shit! Rod, what happened? What do you think happened, Evelyn? I got stung, that's what happened! Nobody is gonna wanna buy a goddamn car with a broken window and no goddamn radio! And now I got ten of them! This is gonna cost me thousands! Oh, shit! Shit, shit, shit! Shit! <laughs> yeah, hello, I wanna report some break-ins. Several break-ins. 3130 East Main. Yes, and hurry it up. Shit. You come and go. Come and 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 go. You come and go. Well, hello, Miss Emiliana. What brings you back so soon? I was going to see if George was here. George? George is not here. Oh, he's gone. Well, I brought the spy for him. What is that? It's just something I got for him. OK. OK, well, I guess just tell him that I came by. Bye, Todd. Bye. Suspicious of the contents, he tore in. uncovering damning evidence. Confrontation was inevitable. What the fuck are you doing? Get to work! I am working. You don't fucking talk to me like that! Hey, you know, you're one of the slowest repair guys I've ever hired. You got a 15-minute break. When you get back, I want all this shit put in boxes, ready to go. You understand? Yeah. I come in here this morning and find out I got bombed pretty hard. Yeah, they wipe my ass clean. They wipe my ass raw. And let me tell you, it's gonna take some pretty serious cash to set things right around here. All right, line. And I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to let you go. Rod, please, no. Ralph isn't working right now, and I really need the- Ralph! What's that with Ralph? <laughs> Thought you broke it off with that chump monkey a long time ago. Mm, no, we're still together. <laughs> Yeah, uh -huh. let me ask you this, Evelyn. How bad do you want this job? I'm just teasing with you, little girl. Yeah, I'll keep you on for a little while longer. But ain't no guarantees. I don't make no guarantees. Thanks, thanks a lot. You just remember who did you a big old favor today. And you get through these files and find out who owes me some money. <laughs> yes.
Where are they at? They back from more radios. Put that away! It's a rat! A rat? It flew! It flew? Are you sure you ain't on drugs? No! Look! Look! Oh! Damn son of a bitch. Feeling guilty upon hearing the news, once again George would stake out the car lot. <laughs> you know, I probably don't even have to get a job. I mean, once my dad dies, I'll be raking in so much money from the inheritance, it's not even gonna be a problem. Is dinner ready yet? Almost. What? But with no bait on the hooks, the thieves would not bite. George knew it and called it a night. But some places never slept. For example, the alleyway behind the Lust Motel. <coughs> Sleep. Evelyn wasn't the only one guilty of causing an early morning commotion. Across town, the conspirator conducted business of his own.
his maker was a carpenter, then he was pure rocket science. Check it out. Look what I got you for them rats. Just scatter them around your desk. That I'll take care of them. <laughs> hey Todd, Mr. Waters. Hey George, here early for a change I see. That's good. I've got a job I needed to do. Let me show you. Come here. Okay, George, this shampooer has a broken roller brush. The new roller brushes are in that white cabinet by the red toolbox. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah, by the door. Yeah, okay. It's just like the vacuum or something's got a bigger brush, okay? Late night, George? Uh, I'm just not feeling real well. All right. Why don't you not bring your problems to work? What the hell is going on in here, George? What are you laying down on the job? What is wrong with you? You know what? Lately, you've been acting really strange, George. Now, we got work to do here, okay? We can't just. If you don't have money to pay Ricardo for the repairs, I understand. But, uh, looks like you're behind on your car payments too, you little sweet cheeks. But maybe we can come to some kind of understanding. Well, I've got $70, and you can take the other half of it out of this week's check. Or I could take half of it out of this. Get off me, creep! Get out of here, you crazy old bitch! I'm very sorry. Yeah, the, the repair technician just walked out on me. Now I'm all backed up. Very professional, I know. Yeah, don't worry, I'm gonna be working late and I'll have them ready in the morning. A again, I'm sorry. Okay, bye. Hi, Todd. Hi, how are you? Is George here? I need to talk to him about something. No, he's gone. That hippie walked out on me earlier today. What, why? He was stealing, you know. I told him if he came back, I'd kick his ass. Oh, he's got two sides to him, you know. Let me tell you. Apparently, a couple of women caught wind that he works here, and they made some phone calls to me. Turns out, he's a real loser, a real mooch. One of them said they lent him some money, and he didn't pay them back. The other woman said, he hadn't paid child support in two months. Yeah, sure, he, he plays Mr. Nice Guy, but then he gets shacked up with him and just lays around and watches TV all day. You know what I need to do is call the authorities on that rotten tomato and turn him in. But first, what may I do for you, darling? Um, I, I don't know, I gotta go.
George, what the hell? Where are you? I've got all this work just stacking up. You're lucky I don't sue your ass. My back's been killing me ever since you manhandled me. I'm coming up there tomorrow. Oh, you will be here tomorrow, and we're gonna have a little talk. You're not getting out of the trap that easy. <laughs> the dark side is always there, waiting for us to enter. Damn it, Ralph! That's it! Us. Baby, he's a shit! Get off me, Get the fuck out of my house! I'm so sick of you! Get the fuck up! Looking back, words could have never explained the mess that was this final day. A climax of the madness that defined George and Evelyn's life on Earth. Mrs. Hall? Hello, this is Todd at the Vacuum Cleaner Repair Center. You can pick up your vacuum cleaner today at 4 o'clock. I'm sorry about yesterday. Just had some problem with the help. Okay. See you soon. Goodbye. Hey, George. Ready for a little talk? Damn it, George! I don't care what kind of problems you've got. You're going to work for me, and you're going to be here on time. Is that clear? I'm trying to run a business here. If I say get it done, get it done! If I say hurry, you jump off your ass and run. Now if I say stop and nip the honeysuckle, well, God damn it, you get done and it easy to suck my dick! In your stupid monotone voice, hey, Todd. It's Mr. Waters. Mr. Waters, not Todd. And the trash. Does your nose even work? Do you even listen to me when I'm talking to you? You've been hoarding up around here, that's what I think. And the rug plates. I've said it before. <coughs> You're too damn slow. Where is your respect? You want to fight? We can take it outside, man to man. I'll stomp your grapes and make you wine. 
I'll make you wish you were dead. I'm your worst nightmare. Are we clear? Rod, I need my car back. Oh, do you now? Yesterday you hauled off and slapped me. You turned on me with a temper hotter than a day woo with a blown head gasket and you expect me to sit here and listen to you? Now do you? Rod, I just want my car back. Well, there's just one little problem. Evelyn Davis owes $243 left. Plus 250 repo fee. Repo fee? Don't play stupid with me, little girl. You know the routine. Just give me my car back. How bad do you want that car? I want it really bad. Just give me my car back. Evelyn, can you stroke the Joker? Huh? Can you? Can you stroke the Joker? You and I may have gotten started off on the wrong foot this week. I'd like to start over, okay? George, I know it can be a little harsh at times. And I think we should try to communicate a little better, you and me. Open the lines up, if you know what I mean. Make things a little more relaxing here in the work environment. And what better way to relax than with some music? You see, George, I like to dance.
Oh, George, what do you think? Huh? George, may I have this dance? Get off of me, you whore. <gasps> George! What is wrong with you? Asshole! I need an ambulance immediately! 4315 Chestnut Lane! This is Todd Waters at Super Suckers. I've just been terribly accosted by an employee. Uh, I need an ambulance immediately. I think my leg is broken. Okay, hurry! He destroyed my knee. The 
feels like a sack of gravel. The ambulance is on the way. Just a shell. Broken physically as he is mentally. No games left to play. No pictures left to paint. From here on out, life is the same for George. Miserable. With nothing left to look forward to other than a monthly check. A monthly check that is quickly pilfered away by Emiliana. 
Hey, George, I'm going to the store to cash your check. We need more cigarettes and diapers. Now, with a bleached mane, she lives with George along with her two kids. The youngest one she claims is his. A life. Is it really what you make it to be? Or is it something that just happens? The result of choices made in response to circumstances which you had no control over to begin with. In the end, does it even matter? Take the roller brush out. George, pay attention. Release the belt so that you can take. Oh, <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Fucking shit that hurt like fuck! What the fuck, George? God damn it, your mother raised you like that? What the fuck is going on? God damn now you get the fuck over here and pull that shit out. Pull that shit out, George. <laughs> Did that really hurt? It, it readjusted. <laughs> it readjusted a few things. I'm gonna have to. <laughs> prop girl. Prop girl. No costume. 